Hey, Warners, welcome to another episode of the Women Your Mother Warned You About podcast. I'm Gina Tremarco Clotter, master sales trainer and coach at Sales Gravy and co host of this show that I'm running solo today without my amazing co host, Susanna Gray Jones. The reason why I'm running solo is because sometimes it's just not feasible for everyone's schedule to work out. And we were just not able to get on the same schedule to make today's episode happen. And today is special. As producer, I didn't want today's show to be whatever was next in our inventory of already recorded shows. But I almost did that because I made up a whole bunch of excuses of why I couldn't do this alone. We'll talk about that later. But today marks the 200th episode. 200 episodes. In my humble opinion, that's pretty amazing for a few reasons. For one, when this show launched in January 2019, there were approximately 650,000 podcasts out there. That's a lot of podcasts. I wondered how we would be able to stand out in such a crowded space back then when we started to create the show. And now, four years later, there are over a million podcasts. And while there are so many more shows, most shows don't make it for more than a year. At least that's what the statistics say. I'm sure there are a number of reasons for this. I can only guess that the commitment is too much for some, both of time and money. And in many cases, there's no plan or purpose around the dream to have a podcast. I know this because people come to me all the time and say, hey, I want to do a podcast. How do I do it? And my question always is, why? Why do you want to do it? For some, it just sounds like it's fun, but it's work and it has to have a goal, just like any business or sales plan. And commitment goes hand in hand with consistency. For anything to work or be successful, there needs to be consistency and a commitment to that consistency. Consistency is hard. I hear it over and over again. Consistency for me personally is really hard as I'm easily distracted by things that I consider a higher priority in the moment, like prospecting or, or closing deals um, or watching Netflix. No, just kidding on that part, right? It's hard to stay consistent to something. Just think about anything that we work on, right? So today I celebrate the one thing, the one thing I've been consistently committed to for nearly four years. Ironically, <laughs> All year, I've actually, I keep saying that our show is in its third season and I fail to recognize that we're actually in our fourth season. And anyone who knows me knows that I'm not very good at math. I'm just, I'm just not. And, the, and, and I started out as an accounting major and I learned pretty quickly, like I failed my first math class in college. I knew math wasn't going to be for me. And I had to ask myself, how have we been able to do 200 episodes in three years, right? I can do that math, right? Like three years, 50 weeks a year, 150 ish shows, but no, 200 shows. Then it hit me that we're actually in our fourth season. I don't know how I lost a year, but I did. So there's another lesson right there, right? So if you're not picking up on this in this episode, I'm trying to put a couple other nuggets there of kind of things that I've learned along the way of podcasting. So here's another lesson, failing to recognize and celebrate the things that we do as well as downplaying or playing small about our accomplishments. I see this pattern happen a lot with business people and salespeople, right? We, we don't give ourselves enough kind of attaboys or kudos for the things that we do. Sometimes we're blind to it. When I was ready to uh, choose another show to honestly be the 200th episode, I realized that I was settling for the easier way out. Like, just be done and not special. Like, don't worry, just, just pick something and go. I convinced myself that I was too busy to find time to do this and to be thoughtful about it, right? I let my perfection infection get in the way, so to speak, right? I, I was like, no, it has to be so perfect, I convinced myself that the only way is the collaboration way, something I was trained to live by in the improv world. And as of recent, I've learned that while it's important to share the spotlight, it's okay to put yourself in the spotlight by yourself. And believe it or not, that's uncomfortable for most of us, including me. Right? But sometimes we don't have a choice. And um, I really do get uncomfortable by myself. Like I, I really would rather share the spotlight 
And some people have a different perception about me and may not agree with that because I'm extroverted, because I can do these things. But I don't know, maybe sometimes I hide behind having someone do it with me. And that's no slight to any of my co-hosts. It's something that I've recognized in myself of like, well, maybe I have to do this episode and highlight 200 and I'm going to have to do it alone. And that's what it is. So here's another lesson. We can't control how others perceive us. Perception is subjective based on narratives others have going on in their own lives, like their own narratives. They're not even narratives about us, but they got narratives about themselves and then form narratives about us. And sometimes we hide our real selves, even if only in an isolated moment. If people meet you in that that one isolated moment or form an opinion of you in that moment where maybe you were slightly different than you usually are, it can be difficult for them to ever see the real you, right? Because they saw a different version in that moment. And, and once you've made a first impression, you've made a first impression. And it's kind of hard to reverse that. So the best advice I've ever received over the years from someone I call my surrogate mom, Mary Lou, <laughs> She's the one who said to me, it's none of your business what others think of you, right? Like, let that settle. It's none of your business what others think of you. And some of you are going to criticize that and be like, well, it's important. Um, You have to think about that. Well, let's just park that for a second. It's very difficult to lean into this because we care about what others think. We want them to think the best of us. We want to be accepted and not rejected. Sometimes we want to be invited to the party, even if we don't actually want to go to it. It's just how we're wired. And this is why social media can be a challenge. Display any negativity and people will use that as a reason to not like you. Show too much happiness and people will use that as a reason to not like you. Go neutral on social media and you're following the status quo and being like everyone else, in my opinion. Of course, in business, you have to be as agnostic as possible. I agree with that. But on non-business channels, just be you, whether happy or sad. I had some very sad days when my mom was sick. And a lot of you followed me on that. Um, This was 2016. And some people found it depressing. And yet others thanked me for giving them a lifeline in dealing with a sick parent. I even had a hashtag. um, It was hashtag Team Tina. And people would actually, they would do a search on hashtag Team Tina because they wanted an update because they had sick parents. And now with my happy posts, I still get criticized as well as thanked. Bottom line, people are always watching you, both the right people and the wrong people. Focus on the right ones. Know who the right ones are. Many things have happened over 200 episodes. The show started with Rachel Tipton shortly after she became Rachel Pitts. Let's be clear on that. Um, Keith Walters and I, um, through through the encouragement of Jeffrey and um, Jennifer Gittimer, We started on their Sell or Die podcast network. The origination of the show, for those who are newer listeners, was based on being women your mother warned you about. However, anyone wanted to define that, right? And that was a question we often asked people of how they would define it. Rachel and I saw ourselves as different from other women in business. Not not so much different, but maybe more vocal about it or willing to say it out loud. It was about being true to ourselves and encouraging others to do the same, both men and women. Real, raw, relevant, and irreverent was and still is how we position the show. Over time, we've become less raw. Even before Rachel departed for other aspirations, we toned down the raw. It happened organically. In 2020, we moved into the pandemic and the show wasn't always easy to do. Rachel even quit on me for a minute over a disagreement that came out of the George Floyd case and and really about the different guests we were going to have on the show. Tensions were high for everyone. Everyone was on edge, including us. We, like many, were both affected by the impact on our businesses and jobs. I lost my improv theater and my training business, as well as went through a divorce, getting COVID, and losing my mother to an aneurysm bursting. 2020 was also the year I joined Sales Gravy, and Sales Gravy became the sponsor of this show. One of the best things to ever happen to me, and definitely the best thing to happen in 2020. Probably the only good thing that happened in 2020 when I think about it. At the end of our third season, Rachel moved on to bigger dreams in her career. The podcast didn't factor in anymore for her. Keep in mind that the purpose of us to do the show was to give us each a platform for our personal brands while spotlighting other thought leaders as guests. We are still very good friends, still sending Marco Polo videos to each other in macho voice. 
you need to go back and listen to the episode about us breaking up in season two to understand what this means. Marco Polo saved a relationship. Enter season four and Susanna Gray Jones making the show saucy instead of sexy. And when I say saucy, I really mean sassy. But because Susanna pronounces sassy as saucy, saucy stuck, which is perfect because sauce and gravy are very similar. So it works perfectly with sales gravy. Susanna has brought her unique style and thoughts to the show. She keeps me on my toes and pushes back. Our constant moments of being lost in translation keep us and the listeners laughing. And for me, humor matters. We have to be able to laugh in volatile times, which we are once again in economically and politically. And of course, here's my shameless plug for Jeb Jeb Blunt's newest book, Selling in a Crisis. Yet another work of brilliance by Jeb because of his ability to see what's ahead and create tools to help businesses as the crisis hits. Thank you for continuing to listen to our show when there are so many to listen to. We continue to focus on spotlighting amazing thought leaders that can help you grow in your business and job and life. We also continue to focus on the life part and how our personal lives interweave with our professional lives, especially in this new normal. It's also important to note that while the business advice that has come up through the years from from whether it was me or Susanna or Rachel or Keith or Jeb or any of our guests, all of that has been stellar and highly regarded. But the personal themes continue to come up over and over again. The themes that affect us in our personal lives and those themes have been about confidence and imposter syndrome and fear of failing. And we'll continue to talk about it and help our listeners through that. Thank you to everyone who's contributed to this show in some way, besides listening. To Rachel for building the show with me. To the Gittimers for the inspiration and platform to launch. Keith Walters for financially getting it off the ground and contributing his business expertise on the show and off. Jeb Blunt and Sales Gravy for taking it to the next level as well as sponsoring it. Our original producer, Doug, and our current producer, Neon, for making it sound amazing. To all of our amazing guests who have basically given us several MBAs over the years, making us better salespeople and hopefully better humans. And of course, to Susanna for stepping in and leveling up. At the beginning of the show, I introduced myself as Gina Tremarco Clotter because legally I now go by that name. While my stage or professional name continues to be Gina Tremarco since I've been known that way for decades, I'm proud to be Gina Clotter. Because through the volatile times I met and recently married David Clotter, my constant beacon of light, supporter, best friend, love of my life. How can I not fall for someone who thought it was the coolest thing for me to have a podcast? He continues to call me a rock star, pass out my cards for the podcast and keep me motivated on days when I'm not feeling so motivated. And he actually listens to the show while in his police car. Thanks, babe. Here's to 200 more episodes. 